the change of regulation for 2017 is, as an engineer, is a more exciting aspect of the car. You know, compared to 2016 car, when it's more an evolution of the car, here you have to change everything on the car, review all the procedure you are doing, and try to optimize the car performance on something you don't know. And it's very, very exciting as an engineer. Probably the biggest set of regulation changes we've had since 2009. Um, very interesting. It's less of a change than 2009, certainly from an aerodynamic perspective, in as much as the flow structures are, are similar, um, but very different in the detail. This one, it opens up more opportunity. We have sought some level of chassis differentiation, and uh, these rules may provide the framework for us to uh, pursue some chassis differentiation if it's to our benefit. There are many new challenges, both for the aerodynamicists and for the structural engineers. It's been a long time since there's been anything quite as uh, different coming out of F1, so we're looking forward to it. From our point of view, as an aerodynamics department, this new set of regulations is extremely exciting because we, we get a lot more freedom in terms of the this areas of the car that can deliver quite a bit of performance. And um, we always like to have more ability to, to play around with these uh, these areas. There's a feeling which I, I do agree with that since we went to the narrow track cars back in 1998 and the cars have always looked a bit out of proportion, you kind of got these uh, quite a narrow car, reasonably wide tyres so, and, and very long cars increasing the wheelbase getting longer and longer so the proportions look strange. So by going back to a wider track with wider tyres proportionally they, they should look better. The whole car does look more aggressive. Um, and I think everybody in the aero department and probably around the rest of the factory have been quite excited by the look of the, the new cars. The 2017 car will be clearly more aggressive car in, in terms of looking, will be wider, uh, looks more muscle car with a bigger tyre for sure. And one of the aspects by having a car wider, it, you could argue that it could be more difficult to overtake. However, due to the aerodynamic effect and more drag effect you will have, you will have and more time you spend on the straight, you will have some opportunity and more opportunity than previous year to overtake in, in this kind of condition. The tyres themselves, if they are um, more durable, should we say, than previous generations, then I think it will change the racing. Not necessarily for the worse, but I think for the better we'll have potentially more overtaking. The more downforce that cars produce, um, the more they can be affected by, by other cars in terms of their, their drag. So it could be that uh, cars are able to run closer behind another car to use the slipstream down the straight. So overtaking in that sense could actually be easier. When you have a, a big regulation change like this, then there's always more ideas than there, are, than there is time available. Like all teams, we're resource limited. We can't pursue every single avenue we can think of. So we have to try to prioritise. Whether we've prioritised on the right things or not, time will tell. We've been set a fresh sheet of paper to try to work out what we need to do to come up with the fastest car. Um, clearly, there's going to be different solutions up and down the grid. And we need to make sure ours is the best. We, we proved last year, in 2016, that on the chassis side we are able to, to create something good. And with a change of regulation, we have the hope that we will challenge more the leader of last year. Hopefully we will, we will be able to close the gap to the lead. Um, we did that to a certain extent last year. We, we um, were more competitive last year than we were the year before for, cert for certain. And during the year, we close the gap up. So we hope that we can, can um, close it up further. It doesn't really change the fact that we're changing the rules to go in and want to be world champions. It's our aim. We, it's what we want to do. Whether we can do it is the great question. And we'll have that answered around about sort of November 2017, won't we? Yes, well, I mean, the cars are expected to be between three and five seconds a lap faster. Most of that gain will come from um, cornering speeds, where the increased downforce on the car will mean that the car is able to go around the corners quicker. 
uh, along with that downforce comes increased drag, so actually speed down the straight will be a bit diminished. That kind of plays a bit into the people who happen to have the most powerful power unit. Um, they will benefit because they'll, they'll be able to come, overcome some drag. But essentially the lap time will come from cornering speed. Cops at Silverstone, um, Turn 9, the, the kink and the back straight at Barcelona, those are no longer corners, they are bends in the straight in effect. It, it's, it's, a, it's a gradual march, we've already seen that with Eau Rouge at Spa, which used to be a, a big deep breath corner, but is now simply a bend on the straight. This extra downforce, extra grip takes that direction further. The improvements you made from 15 into 16, if you can understand why you've uh, drawn benefit from the changes you've made, then it sets a philosophy and a pathway you can follow into 17. What we learned in the previous season in terms of how to make a quick car or how to operate a car didn't change by the new regulation. The new rules of 2017 change the, the way or the the type of tyre you have, the size of the aerodynamic you have. However, the way you work still stays the same. Renault have again done good work over the winter. So we anticipate um, through this year that they will have again closed the gap compared to our two main rivals. Um, from that, we'll, we'll see where we are. Our power unit supplier proved last year that they made a massive progress in 2016 and they promised us the same type of progress for 2017. It will give us the opportunity to be closer to the leader and hope that the chassis differentiation could give us the opportunity to challenge them for the win. The presence of, a, of, of significantly wider tyres has a first order effect on the drag on the car. So much effort has been put into trying to minimise the, the effect these very wide tyres have on drag. On top of that, the tyre will generate a lot more grip and it will affect for sure the suspension stiffness in terms of deformation is what you can achieve on the car and chassis. In terms of the effect on the aerodynamics of the car, because they're a lot bigger, they have a much more significant impact on the rest of the car. And that's something that we've had to, to learn to deal with over the, the last few months. I hope that the car is cohesive. I don't think there's any one particular piece to point at and say, that bit's amazing, or I did that bit, Mum. It's, it, it's how it all hangs together. It's a very neat package. It's a nice looking car. The new bodywork rules, I think, have improved the aesthetics of the sport. And um, if you ever get the chance to look under the skin, it's beautifully designed and beautifully made. So any bit of it between the front and rear wing, I think is fantastic. Superstition is not part of Formula One. It's an engineering racing category and it should not be a, as function of luck. And is, I don't think it is. If you have the quickest car, a very quick driver, not only you win the race. No, RB13 doesn't worry me. A, the aim is to have both world championships back in our possession at the end of the year. And if the car happens to be the RB13, great, bring it on. The number 13 for me is not luck, that's superstition. And I'm not superstitious, um, the first car is responsible for at McLaren was the MP413 and that managed to win both championships. Our, our driver pairing are one of the best of the, of the grid. Clearly they are young, very, very talented and they are pushing each other. Um, if you look around the other teams then it would be difficult to say that there's a driver pairing that is as strong as ours in terms of experience, but also in, in, in feedback and raw driver skill. Um, it's extraordinary working with the pair that we have now and um, really looking forward to working with them this year. They work well together. They both push one another. They're both 
easy to work with, both fun loving, constructive, good teammates, best in the pit lane. The, the first test of the season in Barcelona is uh, one of the most exciting aspects of, of the season. First, you see the other car, you see your car, you try to assess the performance, you try to understand what is going well or wrong with your car, try to anticipate that, try to sort out the problem. Here we are, kind of um, middle of February, and it's, it's, it's that typical feeling now of actually, we've been to, Exhaustion towards the end of the season, I think, for many of the guys is, is how they feel. You go through the winter and you do your work. Now it's time to think, yep, I actually just want to get going again now and to be out on circus and, and see where we are. It's, it, it's generating a lot of interest as we get near the uh, sort of culmination of the first, uh, first efforts, if you like. Get it built, see what it's like. And then, uh, and see what we can do with it to make it even better. So, yeah, looking forward to it. It'll be good, really good. I think 2017. It would be nice if there's a bit of a change in order um, for Formula One. And this is kind of obviously would be selfishly if if we can be at the front of that change in order, that would be fabulous. But I think for Formula One, it would be nice to see some good inter-team racing. We want to challenge the leader and fight for the win. And clearly, we want to see if we are at the level, how much we can push to achieve that. And it will be, the win will be the, the main excitement for me. I think the most exciting thing about the 2017 season is that the aerodynamic regulations have over, opened up avenues for aerodynamic development again, where in the previous years it, it, it plateaued and hopefully that's given us a bit of a chance to, to close the gap to the leaders. So I think looking forward to 2017, we have definitely moved into an era where aerodynamics are probably as important as they ever have been. And I certainly believe that we have the, the best aerodynamics department on the grid. I believe we're able to challenge anybody at that. So. I am really looking forward to, to the challenge of these new regulations and, and the whole season ahead. A regulation change is always going to have some, some excitement about it. It's a chance for the order to reshuffle. Will we be first? Will we not be first? Who's around us? Where are we? It's a bit self-centred, I grant you, but I'd like to be you know, holding two world championships at the end of the year. That's the biggest thing is it creates an opportunity by which we can realise that. And now it's all hands to the pumps to try and do that, isn't it?